Thank you um, for the introduction. My name is Richard Su. Um, so my talk is actually very much related to the previous talk where um, my, uh, we, uh, we focus more on the, um, the development of some cutting edge um, uh, sensor, sensing technologies and how the sensing technology is going to integrate with wireless, sense, wireless systems to improve the energy efficiency in, in, in buildings. So um, let me first start with um, a schematic of cell-powered wireless sensor node on, your uh, on the top left pictures. So, so for a typical cell-powered wireless sensor node, you will have three ma main com components. The first, uh, you will have sensors to take the measurements, and then you have radio modes to tra uh, transmit the, 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 the measurements. And of course, the, lastly, you will have the energy harvester to, to, pro uh, to provide continuous power to, to, the, to, to the device. So uh, in our lab, we have people working on lots of um, sensors. As you, in the previous talk, you, you will see, uh, we, we develop these sensors for underground cables. We have sensors for gas pipelines, and these sensors for um, measuring electric current in uh, residential or commercial areas. And on the other hand, in the following talks, you will see some energy harvesters. And so these are um, energy harvesters from, for vibration, and these harvesters is for uh, harvesting energy from magnetic fields. And this is the uh, harvester to harvest energy from wasted heat. So all these devices, and uh, we are now looking for um, a radio platforms to integrate all these devices so to make a more functional uh, device. So we, uh, there are three modes that we are particularly, particularly interested in. Uh, the first one is from um, the Tex Texas Instruments, which we call it TI modes. Uh, it has, it's, a, it's a very uh, low power, uh, power uh, modes and integrated with a temperature sensor and it also has MP MSP430 microcontroller for people to pr program. And the other mode is, uh, another mode is the dust mode, which is uh, briefly mentioned by Dr. Perpetini uh, per per before, is uh, ultra low power, uh, even consume even low, uh, less power, and, off and it offers very uh, advanced uh, network ma ma management and comprehensive uh, security features. So, uh, and the last one is we are looking at is the XB mode. The XB mode can serve um, a little bit more power, but is extremely easy to, to play ways to, to, to program. So um, next, in, in, in the rest of my talk, I'm going to show you example, a project example, where I'm going to use the XB mode to um, integrate with the electric current sensor to monitor the energy consumption in uh, residential buildings. So the project name is, the, the system name is Stickon Circuit Breaker Current Monitoring System. And then um, the goal of this project is actually to um, deliver a solution you know, so that uh, to retrofit legacy buildings so that we, people can monitor the electric energy usage in these legacy buildings in real time. So we found that um, circuit breaker panels is, uh, is actually a very ideal uh, location to put these sensors on because all the electricity coming from the grid is going to pass through the circuit breaker panels. So it's a very centralized location and also it's very easy to be uh, accessed. And also for each breaker, you will ha have a, re a, re a refined limited area which you will know uh, in, in your buildings, uh, well, which will give you a better understanding of how you are consuming the, uh, cons consumed energy through, through some metering at circuit breaker levels. So, so the goal is to put these sens put some sensors put some sensors onto these circuit breaker panels to, to give you, and, and, and integrate with, with radios to, to um, give you some um, uh, measurements of the, the current flow underneath it. So the system, how the system works is that you have an environment, which is the circuit breaker panel. Um, there is some electric current flowing underneath these each breakers. And these currents generate um, certain level of magnetic fields, and these magnetic fields are picked up by these little sensors here. So we call it piezoelectromagnetic current sensors. So it picks up the magnetic fields, and the magnetic fields is, should be uh, proportional to how much current is flowing underneath in each breakers. 
Then in the system, in the system we also have some signal, very simple signal conditioning circuit to convert that analog differential um, output uh, from the sensor to a DC voltage, and then feed that feed that voltage into a microcontroller, and then and then then radio, so making making it available to um, for access points for people to re display in their mobile devices. So this is how the basically how the, this system works, and the, there is a picture showing that we actually deploy four of those sensors on the breaker panels, connected to a radio. The radio is transmitting the measurement to a laptop. So here it is, uh, a snapshot of, of some of our experimental results. So this is a snapshot from a laptop which is sitting near the, um, the circuit breaker panels. It has a, uh, a radio uh, connected to the laptop. The radio is getting packets from from another radio that is in the circuit breaker panels. So there is a software, we, we, we um, query the, the serial port and then it's plotting um, the, the real time current consumption in two breakers. So there's two breakers, one breaker has a space heater connected and there, another one is have a light, light bulb right here. So when you turn on these, these loads, you will see that our system is able to track that the change of energy usage um, very fast, you know, very fast. And, it, and, and also the, the, is able to display in a real time um, basis. Now, you might wondering what kind of sensor we're using and how it is um, able to pick up, measure current outside of the breaker panels. It's actually, because this, this work has been, um, we've been working on this work for more than uh, four and a half years. The idea is you have a piezoelectric cantilever with permanent magnets on, uh, mounted on its, uh, on its tip. When you place that magnet into a magnetic field, it interacts with magnetic fields, and so there will be a magnetic force on the tip of the cantilever and deforms the piezoelectric cantilever, which will generate a voltage that is going to be proportional to the currents that are flowing uh, in, in the conductors. So we've done a variety of tests and modeling, and we, so we, were, we were able to show that the voltage output from the sensors is able to, it, it is proportional to the current, uh, it's linearly proportional to the current uh, in the conductors. So based on all the theory and the modeling, we start to prototype um, different versions of these, these sensors. The, so the first sensors uh, that I've been playing with, with in my demonstration is this middle scale, which is about one and a half inches in length. So it's not a very small sensor, it's a middle scale sensor. And also um, the work led by uh, our former graduate students, Dr. Ila Lilon, uh, who's been, who has been working on these MEMS current sensors. Um, right now is Chris Sherman is working on the optimization and the fabrication of a next generation of these MEM sensors. And we are hoping uh, in the next few months we are able to use these MEM sensors to deploy in, in onto circuit breaker panels to monitor the energy consumptions. So when we deploy these sensors onto the breaker panels, there are of course a lo lots of uh, practical issues we need to uh, tackle with. Among them, the most difficult one is actually the, um, the crossed coupled magnetic fields. As you see from the pictures on your left is a, is a, is a, is a uh, sort of blow up, blow up uh, view of the, what's inside the circuit breaker metal looks like. You see how complicated and messy the wire can be uh, for these legacy buildings. So when you placed a sensor near, uh, on, on near a circuit you want to measure, and there's a very high probability that there will be other circuits flowing in, in the vicinity of, of the, these, these, um, these sensors. So the sensors not only measures the current from this wire, it also measures the current in the, in, in the neighboring wire. So there's cause of cause of problem, the voltage output then becomes a linear combination of these two. So the, the sensors lose unique uh, dependence on, 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 on the current is supposed to be me measures. So the question comes, uh, it, um, so it, is there still a way that we can, we can use the sensor's information to, uh, to figure out how much current that is flowing in, in, in underneath these breakers? 
So um, the simple answer is yes. Um, and then we come up with uh, deconvolution algorithms by realizing that um, the sensor is a very linear device. So it's, its output is a linear, linear sum of all, all the current flow, uh, w which is affecting that, that sensors. It's a linear combinations. Then we can, we can deploy an array of these sensors onto circuit breaker panels so that based on this, the readings of this array, we can do an inverse mapping to figure out how much current just, uh, that's in, in the circuit breaker panels. Equivalently, it's just solving a set of linear, linear equations. Now, the next, next question becomes, how do you calibrate the sensitivity matrix? How do you know that um, the, how, what's the sensitivity of each circuit with respect to all these, these circuits? So what we propose is that we're going to have a cal cal calibration load, which will, which will be plugged into a particular circuit, and then record the change of your voltage output from your each, each of these sensors, and the ratio of the change of your sensors over how much current you're drawn by the calibration load is actually the uh, sensitivities. So once you plug the cal calibration load to one circuit, you will have an entry of uh, a column of these sensitivity matrix. And, and then you did for the next one, and then and you will have another column and then you did it sequently for all, all of these circuits, then you will finish calibrating um, the sensors. Now, here are some uh, experimental results um, where I have three circuits, circuit breakers, um, where I randomly distributed my sensors on the top of these three, three circuit breakers. Each sensor is picking up signals from, from all the circuits. So that now we using by using the deconversion algorithm, we are able to accurately predict how much current that is actually in in, in each circuit, and it, the, the results was compared by a commercially available kilowatts results, and it shows the accurate uh, prediction of uh, measurements from our sensors. Okay, some some key t takeaways uh, from my, from my talk, and uh, the first one is we have demonstrated uh, the working principle of an integrated wireless circuit breaker more current monitoring systems. And that, that system does not require um, the use of certified electricians to install these sensors as these sensors are installed on the surface of these breaker panels. It will greatly reduce the cost and the labor cost. And also, uh, these sensors using wireless communication devices which reduce the number and the complexity of the components um, needed for the systems. And the overall outcome will be uh, the capital and label um, reduced cost will be greatly reduced. So that ends my talk. Uh, I would like to take any questions you have.